Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week it's part two of the family mold making series in which we are going to continue to build the mold that I show here in the CAD system. This week we are going to focus on, well we're actually going to finish all the machine parts but not quite assemble the mold. I'm just going to, at the end of the show, we'll show how the how the parts fit together on the on the bench. But uh, the next thing we're going to work on or finish is the bottom insert with all these with all these core pins, and followed by finishing the stripper plate, which is this brown piece with its corresponding mold features as well. You can see these features in here. And then finally, we are going to finish machining the aluminum base, which is this transparent or translucent shape with all the ejector pins. Uh, fitting through everything. So stay tuned and you'll see how we're going to machine all the remaining parts for our family mold. And then next week I think we're going to assemble and run plastic parts on this mold. Oh and if you haven't already I recommend watching part one of the family mold making from last week. Oh and sorry for the background noise but a lot of the mills are running in the background during this filming. Okay now we're at the point in the process where we're going to start drilling ejector pin holes and ejector pins basically eject the plastic part off of the out of the mold cavity when the mold opens. So we actually have two mold cavities on the B side. There's the base uh, mold insert which is what we're looking at right now and it has all these little steel pins machined in. And then the other mold cavity, which is the main cavity, is on the stripper plate where there's basically a spring-loaded metal plate that interleaves onto this structure. I had to move the parallel around a little bit so that we don't drill into the parallel since these are through holes. I didn't want to chase drill this on the, on the drill press because it's kind of a, of a semi-precise hole. Next time I'm going to check it. Since I was messing around. Okay, yeah, that looks good. I am going to put some water in there. For the final operation on the B-side mold insert, we are going to ream out the 316 sprue ejector, which is basically the center largest ejector pin, which is, has a slight undercut that we set to pull the sprue out of the A-side of the molding machine. And then it will eject the sprue as lo along with all the parts out of the mold. So, Right now we're gonna ream this guy to 3 16 so that we have a nice clean seal for the plastic to stop up against the ejector pin. This reamer does have a little bit of a wobble, but I think that's okay. Right now we're going at about 500 RPM. Let me pull it out, go back in again. So that's it. We should be good. Let me get an ejector pin and we'll try the fit. Yeah, so here's a 3 16 ejector pin and we should be able to just accurately drop right in there. And yeah, that feels good. There's very little play in it, so I think we are set. Okay. And like I mentioned before, the rest of these holes are, are close but clearance holes for ejector pins. Uh, because uh, most of the ejecting is going to happen on the stripper plate of the mold. There we go. Okay, so we'll pull the A side of the mold out of the vise here. And then after, so what we did is we drilled a, the sprue hole all the way through the mold. Now we're going to flip the mold over and there's just enough of a witness mark here so we can set the center of the back side of the mold onto the sprue opening. Because that's the most important feature on the back side of the mold. I'm going to lay this guy in. I've already cleaned up the parallels a little bit because we do want to have a square 
mold from front to back. I'll tighten this guy up. We'll smack it down with a hammer a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is find the center of the sprue hole and then machine in the standard uh, injection molding machine mounts. So there's a 100 millimeter or approximately four inch reference circle that's machined an alignment ring and then mounting holes for bolting this mold into the molding machine. And that's a fixed program that I've, that I've had for a few years now. So it's, it's basically just plug and play. So we'll do that now. Make sure the parallels are tight because we do want this to be parallel so that we don't tweak the molding machine when it clamps up on the mold. And now for the unveil. <laughs> All right, there is. There's our mold alignment ring. So the next thing we need to do is drop a one inch diameter ball end mill into the exact center, which is the seat for the nozzle of the molding machine. And I'm gonna manually, manually load this one inch ball mill and tell it to go to the zero position. Turn the spindle on to, let's go lower than 1,000, to 500. Then we're gonna plunge this, this hemispherical ball mill into the center of our mold, which is also gonna be the ceiling seat for the nozzle of the molding machine so that the plastic doesn't squirt out on the backside of the mold, but shoots down the, the sprue run into the cavity of the mold. So there we go. So that, that little hemisphere there with a hole in the middle is the nozzle spot or the nozzle contact for the molding machine. And then that's where we shoot the plastic into the mold. Okay, so now we're gonna set the tools to drill and tap our mounting holes for the mold. This is a 3H16 spiral tap, set length. Now I'm gonna double check tool number four. It's always good to double check. Kind of like measure twice and cut once. Applies to tools as well. Okay, so we are at zero. All right, I'll reduce the rapid, get speeds and feeds right. And then we're gonna go ahead and run this. Press start with the finger on motion hold. And we'll drill our first hole right here. Try not to splash too much. Aluminum does need coolant because the aluminum does like to build up on the cutting tip of your cutting tool and wind up clogging your tool. You wind up welding in a solid plug of aluminum on your cutting tool if you don't cool it or if you're running too fast. There you go, and we're done. And we can pull our mold out. The edges may be sharp too, so. Anyway, so this is the A side of our mold with our steel insert and the aluminum carrier, our two alignment pins, or alignment bushings for the mold alignment to the B side. 
So now we're over on the Haas mill and I'm setting up to do some pilot holes to drill out clearance holes for the 3D profiling for the mold cavity in the stripper plate. So here you see we're pecking with a drill center. And then, uh, oh, and this is on the GoPro and the audio isn't that great. So I'm doing a record over or a voiceover. And after we're done pecking, then we're going to drill out the clearance holes, both for ejector pins as well as the tapered 3D cavities. And after we're done with the drilling of the ejector pins and the clearance holes for the 3D machining, then a 1 16th end mill is going to be loaded up. And we will then uh, machine 3D profiles of the two mold cavities in the stripper plate. And then after all of that's done, we can uh, pull it off and then we will grind the backs. Oh, well, actually, we need to ream out the ejector pin holes before we pull the part off and grind the backs. Looks like I have some unnecessary drill pecks in here, but it's also good to clear out your reamer. Uh, all right, let's, let's speed this show up. Spinning this reamer at 900 RPM. Actually, I've got a 1 16th ejector pin here. We can check the fit. All right, that feels good. A little friction, maybe a little on the loose side. If it's too tight, then basically the steel will start galling up on itself between the pin and the mold, you know, over thousands of cycles. So I think we're good. So here we're drilling out the holes for the eighth inch ejector pins. Uh, previously there was just a pilot hole that was used for some other features. So now we're drilling out these holes to basically one drill size under one eighth of an inch. And then with this eighth inch reamer, we will chase out these holes to have our ejector pin holes. So now we're into the fussy little details of the mold making process. <laughs> Chase out holes, change out drill bit, add reamer, reset tool height, slow down program, chase out holes again, and repeat. So we're going to use the same program as before. I'm going to visually set the reamer height, and then I'm going to Slow down the speed. Oh, my phone's ringing. Hold on. Hit cycle start again. Ideally, I should have raised that tool up, but I know what its path is, and there it raised itself. Actually, that's a good that's a good example. Sometimes the the CNCs will move in X and Y first because they strictly follow the instructions in your code, and then move up in Z. So if your tool's down inside of a pocket and you're going someplace else, the mill isn't isn't necessarily smart enough to pick the tool up out first and then move over. In this case, it moved over and then picked the tool up and then went back down. So that's a good example why you don't do what I just did and leave the tool close to your, to your workpiece. WD-40 for the ream. I'm gonna speed up the feed here. So it's, a, it's been a while since I've dressed this stone. So I've got a diamond tip uh, stone dresser here. And I recommend buying a professional one from a tool supply company so that you know, your stone actually works correctly. So fast cut makes a nice clean open poured section on your stone. In my opinion, I'm not an expert on grinding so other people may have other opinions, but that sounded good. And then you can look at the color on the face of your stone to see if there's any discoloration spots, which means you probably didn't hit it with the diamond. But that looks good. I'm gonna bring the stone down where the stock is on the outswing side of the stone. So again, so we don't jam the stone up. And I'm starting to just wiggle back and forth as we approach the steel. There we go. I'm going to back off a little bit because I'm not sure how flat this steel is. See out there, it's 
taking a little more off. Looks like we probably do need some coolant. Approximately eight thousandths off of this this plate to get our mold cavity to the right thickness. And after we mold our first parts and if we have a poor parting line where the pins line up, then we can start to grind off a few thousandths of this plate at a time and that'll bring the, the pins on the A and the B side closer together to actually shut off and create the hole that we need in the part, in the final plastic parts. So this is a nice adjustment, you know, because you can pull this plate off while the mold is still in the molding machine and just stick it on the grinder to clean up any flash by reducing the thickness of this guy. So one would argue that maybe we should leave this plate a little thick, mold the first parts, measure the flash between the pins, and then adjust this plate, the, you know, the final thousandths or two. So we may actually do that. So when I dress this wheel, the, the porosity is, is pretty open. I don't have like a burnished, burned ring on this stone, so we should have a relatively good finish on the steel. As you wear down your stone, it starts to fill up with material and kind of round off and all the sharp tips are gone, and you wind up just rubbing the steel more than you're cutting it. This is probably off camera a little bit. There we go. All right, well, we're starting to clean up this raw stock. So I think I'll take maybe five thousandths off of this guy and then we'll see where we're at. pretty good. Seems pretty flat. The grind looks nice. I have a little bit of a warble out here. I took a kind of a heavy entry, but all in all, it doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to measure this thing and take off any extra material, probably leaving it a couple of thousand thick, as I mentioned before, so that we can adjust the mold heights after we mold first parts. So, all right. All right, so I set up the mold block stock for the B side of the mold and I've loaded a half inch end mill and set its height to the center and found the zero for this block and also loaded this 5 16 uh, drill for some pilot holes for machining out for the bearing surfaces mostly and a couple of, of spring pockets inside of the B side of the mold. So we are set to go so I'm going to hit the cycle start button after I reduce the feed rate. Bring the tool down, slow it down as we get close. My finger on the stop. I'm gonna check the vise one more time. Might as well get the coolant started. And feed hold release. Yeah, that seemed to punch down, but I think we're correct. There we go. All right, so the next step on this mold base uh, on the B side is to drill and tap the mounting holes to mount the mold insert into the pocket that we've machined. 
So I've already set the tool heights and we're gonna do a drill and tapping of an M3 threaded hole, four of them. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. We reduce the rapid tools above the part, the start cycle. And we'll bring the drill tool down. I didn't fuss with center drilling this because it doesn't need to be precise. And these stubby drill, sometimes, a lot of times you can get away with not having to center drill in softer metals like aluminum. So yeah, it engaged fine. It's a good sign that our pocket doesn't hold water. That means their ejector pin holes went all the way through. Okay, so I also realized that I need to machine about half a millimeter off these, this, this original stock surface. Uh, the model was not quite right, so I updated it. Uh, this, it was designed for a 3.8 or 9.52 millimeter thick plate, and now we, our plate is 9 millimeters. So actually I'll take probably 0.6 millimeters off of these two sides with the shell mill. Uh, so let me do that. <laughs> okay, here comes our tool. This is gonna be a kind of just a clearance cut, so it doesn't need to be really precise. And you, typically you don't want most of your mold surface to engage the other side, but you want to do things called uh, shutoff landings where you concentrate the clamp force around your cavity. So having this this face on the mold is, is not is not ideal anyway. So I'm going to do tool setup on 19 set length and then we'll drop down 0.6 millimeters and I will do a manual jog and X I get interesting finish on this because the RPM's a little low. Kind of a, a cool looking spiral pattern. All right, for the final two holes for the top side of this thing, we still got to drill and tap mounting holes on the bottom of this mold block, but one thing at a time. So here we go. <laughs> and then tapping. Again, this screw is gonna retain the stripper plate and tension up the spring that's gonna be in the little pocket, which is around that screw. There we go. So now we can flip this mold block around. I'm gonna face the back. And then we will drill and tap the mounting holes for the riser blocks. And we can bring our tool down into view. I always like to enter the stock from a corner just so it's not so crazy if you get an axis wrong and jam it down in there. Or your feed rate is too high. So this is 100 microns or four thousandths per click. There we go. Now we will manually jog this shell mill across. This is a three inch shell mill. Hey, so I loaded the drill for the three eighths in tool position four. Now I'm going to set the height of the 3 8 16 tap here. This is a spiral tap, similar to what we use for mounting the other side of the mold. And I'm just going to visually check back because it's not critical. Uh, tool setup in position 5, tool set length using touch off device, so T equals 0. Alrighty, now we're going to need to set the, find the center of this block, but we do have our ejector pin hole right here. So that's a good one to use to use the center finder to find. 
So we're gonna go to tool 20. This alignment is relatively precise requirement because uh, the ejector plate is going to be lined up to this guy because we're looking at the bottom of the mold right now. So I'm bringing this cone down and we're going to stick that cone basically in the hole that we drilled from the other side for the center sprue ejector pin and the cone will offset. And do this at your own risk because you are reaching into a mill. You can also supposedly use this center tool as a wobbler, but it never worked out for me. So I just feel it. Basically, I'm feeling the edge. And again, be careful not to smash your finger here because it, you know, these will smash you good. But I'm feeling the two cylinders of this edge finder and when they when I can't feel a step anymore that means we are within a thousandths. So we're on the center of the back of our mold and I've set both tool heights so we can go ahead and run the program. Okay here it goes. We're gonna go to the first corner for our mounting hole. We'll turn on the coolant. I'm over on the house mill next to the Herco setting up the ejector plate. Off camera, of course. But I'll show you as soon as that one finishes what I'm up to over here. Okay, this is the back of our mold base. So these are the four mounting holes that the riser blocks will mount to. And I've got one right here. So these blocks will bolt on like so and a bolt goes through it all. And then these are the holes for the ejector pins. And actually finally we need to drill uh, or machine two more mounts for some guide pins for the ejector plate. So that will happen, but let me get going on the ejector plate setup on the other mill. So we'll come back to this one. Okay, so I've got two Aluminum plates here. I think they're five eighths or half inch thick. I'm not sure how thick they are. Uh, loaded up into this vise, and I've already faced both ends with the shell mill here off camera. Now I'm going to clamp them together so that they act as a single unit and still fit into the vise. This is a can't twist clamp here. It's basically a fancy C clamp, and we're tightening that down. So now uh, I'm going to do a trick where we're going to drill all the ejector pin holes and also drill and tap the screw holes that will bolt these two plates together and pinch the ejector pins in place. Uh, so it's, it, it kind of saves time and alignment to, to basically drill the clearance hole and countersink plus the tapped hole in one setup um, and also uh, square up the ends of the, of the stock as well. So these ejector plates are approximately two and a half inches wide and going to be six inches long. And so normally you can't clamp two plates of metal like this, but with, a, with the cant twist holding them down, you can get away with it. But otherwise, you can really only clamp one item at a time in these vices. The other one will inevitably be loose and fly out of there. So the cant twist is an exception to that rule, but you, you don't want to overdo it because you can still launch the top plate out of there. I'm just manually jogging. It seems to be half the work I do on this CNC is manual work. And I'm just cleaning up the end of these plates. They technically don't have to be squared or cleaned up at all as long as the inner features are accurate, which are CNC cut. So, but gotta make it look nice for the customer. <laughs> so now I'm gonna swap this, these plates around and then we can mill the other side to six inches.
All right, so we're setting up to to drill the the mounting holes for our ejector pins in the ejector plate, as well as the uh, male and female mounting screw holes that will screw the two plates together. We're going to do all of this in one setup. So basically, I'm drilling the clearance hole for some M4 screws, as well as uh, in the bottom on the second stacked up plate, the threaded hole for the same screw. So we're going to start with a tap drill for an M4. I'm going to come down and set this tool height. Okay, so here's our stack up of parts. I took the two clamps off and they're kind of stuck together pretty good when you machine them like this. But when I crack it apart, you can see we've got our top clamp and then our, and then our through clamp or the bottom part. So this all fits underneath the molding machine and then ejector pins are pointing up. But we've got our, our counterboard clearance holes for our, our socket cap head screws. And then in the same machining operation, we've got our threaded holes for the screws. And we've got the holes for our alignment bearings and then all of the holes for our ejector pins. So it's kind of like turning one part into two parts. Yay! <laughs> but uh, one last thing I got to do is drill out this center hole and drill and tap a 1 half 13 threaded hole through there because that's how the molding machine pushes the ejector plate forward and back. So big old bolt is going to go right there. Uh, I did set up this, I clamped this piece of stock in the vise next to us, which, yeah, you can see. And that way we've got our, our same position. Uh, but it is, it is one plate lower, so I'll have to do a Z offset of half an inch when I drill and tap the, the, the half 13 threaded hole right here. Okay, so let's set up for that. Let's set this tap height. I think your vantage point, the stock is a little bit below the vice jaw, so apologize. Like so, and then we'll double check the drill. So I had the drill in the wrong spot. Okay, so I'm gonna come down and touch off drill number four. And now we are ready to drill and tap our final hole here. So I'm gonna go to menu. Reduce the, cycle, the rapid feed and hit cycle start. Make sure our vise is tight. Turn on some coolant. And drill out that center hole. Okay. And there you go. That is the mounting post for the external ejector system in the molding machine. Let me take a look. There it is. All right, so now we're back on the Herco mill and we're looking at the back of the B side of the mold. And now we're gonna machine a couple of interference pockets that we're gonna press some 3H shafts into. And those 3 8 shafts are going to be the bearing lines or bearing rods to guide the ejector plate that we just worked on on the Haas mill right next to us. 
So I think this is one of the, maybe the last operation for the functional aspect of the mold. The only thing we have to do now is drill some heater cartridge or some cartridge heater holes in the sides of these blocks so that we heat the mold up. And that's it. So with that, let me go ahead and raise this tool off. I just set the tool height. So we'll go Z positive and the program is loaded. So I'm going to hit auto run and start. So we're going to load a 5 16 drill bit to drill out the, the bulk of the aluminum. And then, hmm, I wonder why it's rotated that way. Well, as it turns out, I had the, the drill portion of the program pointing at the wrong holes. So it was pointing at holes that already existed. So I updated the drill and now let's go ahead and run it. That's why I always keep my finger on the pause button. Okay, so auto, yes, change, run the program. And start with my finger on the pause. Now that's the right location. Okay, and then we'll turn on the coolant. So I took four microns off of the cut on this round pocket, which is an eight micron diameter re or increase. And now we got their pin that, it actually starts in almost free at the top, but as I push it in deeper, it starts to wedge in. And then we get that pop sound, which is always nice. I actually stopped the cut short on this side because it was, it's not really a press fit, So, but this guy over here is a press fit because it's kind of tapering in at the bottom, but it also makes a little pop sound. So it's clear at the top and pressing in the bottom, which is kind of nice. Well, that sure was a lot of machining. So I, it's possible I may break this episode up uh, just due to the sheer amount of processes that I just threw at you. But here's the, the final parts. So the ejector plate, uh, actually another part of the ejector plate, no, it was over here. So we can briefly go through the stack up. So we start with the base, which my, actually my brother makes these for me. Uh, he's on the East Coast. So he machines the risers and the base plate. I don't think he made this particular one. These are older ones. And then the ejector plate system goes in like so. And then the ejector pins go through the holes, up through the mold. I'll, I'll pull this guy forward. And then the mold base fits. You can pull this pin out. I think you get the idea. Anyway, the ejector pin goes uh, up through the mold. And then our mold insert, which is this guy made out of A2 tool steel with the precision little through hole pins for the plastic part, goes on top of here, which I still need to deburr. And I carefully press this guy into place. And if we need to pull it out, then there's some threaded holes to push the screw all the way through and then kind of jack the part back out. And then the stripper plate, which is this guy, fits on to this location. And there's, it's slightly higher than the landing next to it. And then ultimately the top part of the mold aligns down like so, and it all comes together. So this is the assembly and the next phase in all of this is we're gonna assemble all these parts and grind our ejector pins and get the, get the mold assembled and ready to be loaded onto the molding machine. So stick tuned or stay tuned. And I may actually see you in a couple of days depending on how the editing goes. All right, thanks.